Call me Alistair Uberim, cause I've got a hankering for some horse meat. Wanna chat out on that stuff that makes your head grow? The Ogre Kingdoms are out for blood on the outskirts of Nuln, and Woolly Rhinos are looking to demonstrate why they're such a problem for Bretonia. In particular, the Knights of Fair Bastone and their fearsome Beast Slayers. For the next few battle videos, I'm playing on some modded maps, many of which you likely have not seen before, I'm trying out a new game mode, land battles with capture points. In truth, the capture point is fairly unimportant in this game mode. It really only serves to frame the engagement and serve as a focal point with interesting terrain. But even if you control it for like five, 10 minutes, you're not gonna win because of it. It would really only ever truly come into play if someone was attempting to like draw kite you and generally just play like an ass, avoiding combat for 20 minutes or something, which is never really gonna happen if you're playing a modded game with friends. But still, it's nice to have some new maps to play with and many of which have been ported over from the Domination map pack. So big thanks to Gojira, Imaias and all the mods responsible for making it happen. Today, we're fighting in and around that point in the center with a real thick, hale and hearty ogre build. It's kind of tailor-made for taking on Bretonia. The big thing for the ogres here is that their heal game is redonkulous. They have two of the best single target heals in the game with Butcher and Troll Guts, and you can stack those together to keep Stonehorns or Crushers alive in really bad situations that precious few other factions in the game would be able to escape. I think Flying Taco has been the main proponent of the ogres over the last few months, and one unit he always brings alongside Greasis are the Sky Striders, which of course are Rhinox great weapons that can brutalize just about any large target in the game. Whether it's Cav, single entities, or monstrous infantry, if they get a clean charge or surround off, it's over for whichever unfortunate victims happen to be in their way. Hidden in the trees opposite from them though are some Pegasus Knights and the Green Knight himself. Potentially interesting combo for taking down Ogre Cav, although naturally Royal Pegs are a bit better in the pegging game. But if you pair them all up with Albrecht and his Braid of Border Low for the extra bonus for Slurge, definitely have some ability to take down the big boys. Not to mention the Trident of Manon, which is quite useful for clearing objectives with the morale penalty and literal wave clearing of his deity. There are two Questing Knights, a bunch of Archers, a Grail Relique, and the Beast Slayers of Bastone with their armor piercing bonus for Slurge Halberds. No companions of Kunel have hit the field, and I do kind of feel like they're an auto-include against the Ogres. I mean, it's armor piercing, it's bonus for Slarge, it's quite literally their best anti-large cav unit, one of the best in the game, and one of their most effective tools for trading into what is ostensibly an entirely different weight class of cav. And I know people like to say Brett should have the best cav in Warhammer. Frankly, I don't believe that to be true. They should have the best selection and perhaps the best cost efficiency, but no. Grail Knights at 1400 should not be beating Rhinox Cav at 2000 or Skull Crushers at 1800. Like I said, this is a different weight class entirely. The way Bretonia wins those fights is by utilizing their superior mobility, by feinting and bogging them down in peasants first, then striking. And combined arms tactics are something Bretonia is quite adept at, especially when they have the amazing flying lords that they do. Albrecht on his Hippogriff or Lewin on his Hippogriff both or Fey Enchantress with their Mortis Strain and Heals, all that can work wonders for you in quite a large variety of matchups, and that's including the Ogre Kingdoms as well. So, as things get underway, Ogre Bulls into the center, and their crushing mass will certainly cause quite the impact in and amongst the peasant front lines. Always a joy to see those blubber bellies rebound into some poor peasants gain Greenest Noggin and send him flying over yonder hill. Bastone has secured the capture point and slowly that value will continue to rise throughout, activating neurons, I guess, for both players and monkey Ooga Booga Brain. But that's the last I'll mention of it because it really doesn't matter. This battle will not last long enough for either player to win on capture points. The emphasis is way more on the land battle side in land battles with capture points. Another big thing to note here too, army losses is not a thing in this game mode. I think it's just not able to be coded in, I guess. It could potentially lead to some spicier endings and last stands, but will generally just lead to one player conceding when a situation is insurmountable because you'll have like a single entity left that's completely surrounded and realize you can't do anything and then you'll just concede rather than wait five minutes for that thing to die. Kind of a big test here for the Ogre Bulls, charging directly into Men at Arms pole arms. Be curious to see if they're able to win that head on without any Noblar support. Bone Crusher, taking those peasant bowmen down past half HP and killing more than half their models, while at the same time, some Noblar trappers that just sprung their ambush from the woods, able to dodge the Tempest from Albrecht they bore alone. And in the center, Ogre Bulls, under a deluge of fire from Pox Arrows, retreating. And that's a really effective way to stretch your opponent's micro, because if they have an attack order and they're not paying attention, those archers might move up into melee. 
if they're not being careful. A gorgeous engagement in the Bretonian rear, and a great example of how Saber Tusks are utilized in Ogre Kingdom's lore. They let loose the hunters to track down their prey, tie them up, nibble at their heels, and then the Rhinox come barreling in to drop the hammer, and you can tell from that size difference alone why that should be a hard fight for even the most elite of Bretonia's knights. All that armor, all that crushing weight, the rampaging rhinos are only just getting started, as is the righteous mailed fist of the Shark Tooth tribe, and here come the Sky Striders on the opposite flank. Once again, the Saber Tusk and Rhinox Crusher combo gonna prove quite challenging to deal with here, but this time the Pegasus Knights are coming in for a hammer and anvil at the same time, and if they get some help from Albrecht and his braid of Borda Low, it might just be enough to turn the tide. So, as the Questing Knights try to disengage over here, it looks like the Saber Tusk pack are leading the charge on the other side, and we get a better vantage point on that charge as the Sky, Sky Striders make contact. Pegasus Knights are hot on their heels, but as they're about to touch down, they get dismembered. That'll slow down their speed and charge bonus, make them less effective in this drag it out fight. Green Knight went straight after the Slaughter Master. Really good target for him, but he has some support from Noblar Trappers and a bunch of Ogre Bulls who retreated from that frontline engagement. You can see just the, the battlefield's already coated in red right now. A lot of that front line has turned to pace and the Ogre Bulls are already through. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stacking heals for high value targets on the Ogre roster. The combination of Butcher and Troll Guts together, most monstrous units in the game would be butchered in this situation. They'd be killed by Questing Knights, by Albrecht, by the Pegasus Knights, but the Sky Striders are going to take that and not only take it, they're going to easily survive it. They're going to lose one model in the entire engagement, not even drop to half HP after killing Pegasus Knights and Questing Knights, and they're going to force Albrecht they board a low off. This unit is insane. Monstrous Cavalry is insane when you can heal them with that kind of burst healing. And yeah, it is a big investment when you're talking about a top tier army ability and your expensive heal. You're not going to have a lot of wins of magic after overcasting that, but still, that is worth it to keep your Sky Striders alive, especially after they crump an entire flank effectively by themselves. Bull Gorger just sent the way of those Ogre Bulls, who now have a full surround off on the Green Knight, and this is one of the bigger issues that the Green Knight, or Gilles Le Breton, deals with in the current meta. He doesn't have a lot of mass, and he's just on horseback, so even though he is a great duelist, and he can do a lot of damage to something important, like a Slaughter Master, or even Monstrous Cavalry, he's gonna get surrounded, and he's gonna get bogged down, and perhaps even more importantly, he'll get staggered by something big like the Rhinox Crushers, so if multiple models are hitting him, he doesn't deal as much damage as you'd like to see back, because a lot of the time he's not going to be attacking, he's going to be getting perpetually staggered, and that is something I would like to see get changed. It's weird because, yeah, you can't give a character like him tons and tons of mass to be able to push his way through whatever infantry formations are in his way, but that does cut down on his effectiveness a lot when he's in situations like this, getting bogged down by cheap, cost-effective troops. And the Trident of Manon might be able to clear some of that out, but it's not going to be very effective against the Ogre Bulls or Monstrous Infantry. Meanwhile, Sky Striders and the other Rhinox Crushers have free reign. You've heard of Hungry Hungry Hippos, but have you heard of Rampaging Rambunctious Rhinoceros? They're going to have another heal tossed their way for good measure, and now they can go into the Peasant Bowman and finish off three or four regiments that were routed off from that frontline engagement. And when they touch down... It's, it's just entertaining to watch, man. This is really what you sign up for when you're talking about the Ogre Kingdoms. This is what we wanted to see on day one. You love to see Monstrous Cavalry make impact. And when they do, they hit with the force of a freight train. Not much you can do, but just get the hell out of the way. I do love me some Ogre Kingdoms, man. That is, uh, that just doesn't get old. It really doesn't. So as the Woolly Rhinos, the Albino Rhinoceri, charge into the rear, finish off these Peasant Bowmen, Bounce Bar shifting heavily in the Ogre Kingdom's favor, and they've pretty much already sealed the deal. That was true after both the Questing Knights were killed, and basically no damage was dealt back in an important manner to the Rhinox Crushers. Crushers really do change the complexion of this matchup. I do think this is a hard matchup for Bretonia. They have difficulty dealing with Crushers because they're just so effective in that armor piercing and bonus for large roll, and frankly, they should be. So if you are Bretonia in this situation, 
and we see Albrecht and the Green Knight make their last stands. What do you do to try to turn the tides back in your favor? One, I think you probably don't want to bring the Green Knight. I like the idea. I've tried it myself. I used it against Dov in early access for Immortal Empires. On paper, it seems like it'd be a decent way to turn the tides in those Cav engagements. The reality is the Red Ice Crushers just simply have too much mass and punching power. And yeah, they don't want to spend their time surrounding the Green Knight if they can avoid it, but you don't really need to bog the Green Knight down with Crushers. You can send them Saber Tusks, you can send them Noblars, you can send them any manner of things. Even just a unit of Ogre Bulls can easily get a surround off on him, and once that happens, he's stuck there for the rest of the battle, essentially, and he won't be attacking anything important. You need the Flyers, and so I think Albert the Border Low on his Hippogriff with the Braid of Border Low is a really good idea, but you gotta pair him up with something that really has that punch. So, Companions of Kunel would definitely be a great choice. Question Knights, I think, are a good choice here, too. Armor Piercing, they are the best anti-cav unit on the Bretonian roster, at least when it comes to something with high armor, like Ogre Crushers. But yeah, Green Knight, the Terror seems useful on paper. In reality, I just don't think he's in a great place right now. And I think the biggest thing I would change for him is probably give him some equivalent to Verminous Valor, just to allow him to create some space if he gets surrounded by at least regular foot troops. Because it's so easy to just tie him down. He just doesn't have the mass to get out of there. And he doesn't do anything. And he didn't really do anything that battle either. He got 1400 value, but he didn't kill anything important. And that was pretty much the exact same situation I had with him in early access when I played against Dov and tried that out. The other option that Bretonia has here, paired alongside Albrecht de Bordelow and his braid, are the Royal Hippogriff Knights. And that is definitely a unit that can do serious work against Rhinox Crushers. Again, you have to be careful with how you engage. You can't just YOLO them in into a frontal engagement and expect them to do really well against the Sky Striders, which are pretty much the best Monstrous Cavalry unit in the entire trilogy. But if you give them some space, you tie down the Crushers first, then you come in for the rear charge. Those guys can change any battle for you, and I think that's a decent choice for Bretonia as well.